Hey, it's Susan, Voices for Learning, where we help you grow as a voice actor. In this video, I am going to show you how I handle big, ginormous, distracting breaths in my track in Studio One. So I actually made a macro um, that diminishes the breath significantly. It doesn't take the breath out 100%. It just lowers the volume a bit. And I'm going to show you how it works first, and then I'll show you um, the steps that this macro actually is, and then I'll show you how to actually how make the macro yourself um, and how to assign a keyboard shortcut to it. So let's listen to this breath first of all. Yesterday from a trip to Africa where Ron injured his leg. Ron already visited his... Okay, so it's a pretty big breath. And like I said, I don't necessarily want to take the breath out 100%. I just want to decrease it. So what I'm going to do is play it and I'll just go ahead and apply the macro to the breath and then you'll get to hear it with that decreased volume. Turned yesterday from a trip to Africa where Ron injured his leg. Ron already... Okay, so it's still there. The breath, you can still see it's there but it's just not as loud and as obnoxious. So the way that this macro works is it's um, actually four different steps. So let me go to a different breath and I will show you, here's another one that's pretty big. And I will show you the four steps that this macro has. So first off, the way that you apply the macro is you, of course you have to select it. And then I have applied a keyboard shortcut, the tilde, which is uh, upper left-hand corner above your tab key on your keyboard. And whenever I just, whatever I've selected, it diminishes it by negative uh, 12 decibels. So the first thing that happens in this macro is after I've selected it is it's actually creating a range. It's actually splitting what I have selected into a new range. There we go. So you can see these two lines right here. This is a new range. And you can actually see, obviously, like, <laughs> it's, a, it's a new range. So the first step is to edit slash split the range. The second step is that we are lowering the audio volume. We are editing the audio volume by negative 12 decibels. That's the second step. The third step is we are deselecting it. Look, remember, I had it selected before. Here, we'll go back. I had it selected, and now it's not selected anymore. So we have to uh, deselect whatever was selected. And then the fourth step is that I want to go ahead and keep continuing with the auto scroll. And let me show you what that means. So, for example, um, I've got auto scroll turned off right now. Auto scroll right here is this button right there. That's auto scroll. And what it basically means is that when I have it on, all of Ron's details are automatically retrieved. The, the audio track scrolls with it. When I turn it off, you're not going to see that audio track scroll. So here, I'm going to have it turned off. Who initially looks at Ron's medical record. And as you can see, I don't see the cursor anymore. So when I have, um, as, as that fourth step of the auto scroll, what it does is, is the track scrolls up to catch up to where the cursor is because the way I edit is I just keep it going. I keep the audio going. I keep it playing. I don't necessarily stop it a whole lot. I don't stop uh, my 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 track after you know to to listen. I just I just keep it going. So for example, here is and performs the test itself. At the end of the test, Ron's doctor receives the decrypted scan and sends Ron a text message with a link to the personalized and secure test results. The couple. Okay, so you just saw that. I had lost my cursor. I had lost my cursor. Um, the cursor's over here, but when I went ahead and did the um, decrease 12 macro, it caught up with my cursor. So it did the auto scroll. So that's the fourth step. And that's an important step if you are 
um, editing while you are listening. So let me show you now how to actually make the macro now that you understand what that is. To make the macro, we just simply go up to Studio One uh, menu, down to Macro Organizer. Pull it over here. And let's go ahead and actually look at this macro before we make it. So here is the macro. Decrease 12, that's what I've named it. And let's just look at it to edit it. I'm not necessarily editing it, I just want you to see the steps, kind of like what it looks like so you're aware. So over here on the right hand side, I have the title of the macro, which is decrease number 12. Uh, the description is, is that it decreases the selected volume by 12 decibels. And I have four commands. The first command is edit split range, which you'll find over here on the right. Edit split range. The next one is audio edit volume, negative 12. And there's actually an option so you can tell it how much to uh, decrease the volume or raise the volume. And then the third command is edit deselect all. And then the fourth command is edit auto scroll. So to make a new macro, all you do is just click on new, the new button right here. And we'll go ahead and title your macro, you know, minus 12. Or if you want to decrease the volume by negative 20 or negative three or negative five or whatever, you know, that's totally up to you, whatever you want to do. But I'm just going to say negative 12. And then the description, I always, I actually don't even know what group means. So sorry about that. But the description, just type in a description so you know, because there's going to be a time where you're like, I don't remember how I made this. What does this even do? So we just say this decreases the volume of selected audio by 12 D, B. Okay, now what we do is we add in our commands. So to add in the commands, first we need to find the command. So we go ahead and search. So I'm just, what we wanna do is split the range and that happens to be in the edit kind of like heading. So I'll just type in edit and here is edit right here. So these are all of our edits and you just scroll down until you can find split range. Split ranges under the edit category heading. Here it is. Split range. Click on it and then just click on the add button right here in the middle. All right. Our next step is that we want to edit the volume. Ah, here we go. And you can just type in edit volume and I just click on edit volume and then click on the add button. So we need to adjust the volume by typing in negative 12 to let it know how much we're editing the volume by. So just double click on edit volume. It brings in this little pop-up box and we just type in the level that we want it adjusted. So we want it at a negative 12 or whatever you want. And you can raise the volume too. I mean, as you can see on my, on my, um, one of my macros is increased by three, which is really handy. So right now I want to uh, do this macro is negative 12 and I, and relative, I just have it checked in. I don't actually know what it means, but it works pretty well for me. So just click okay. And then the third command is to deselect all. So you can just type in deselect all up. Oh, it's under the edit. Deselect all. Um, deselect all just means like whatever was selected, we're deselecting. Add that. And as you can see, we've got three in our in our uh, macro, three commands. And then the last command is auto scroll. Okay, there we go. And there's auto scroll. Okay. And we want to add, click on auto scroll and add it. Okay. Then we hit OK. Now, at this point though, <laughs> At this point, you got to put it, you have to assign it somewhere. You have to assign this macro somewhere. So assign it a keyboard shortcut. And I'm going to show you how to do that. 
So let's close that little macro box down and to assign it a keyboard shortcut, we're gonna go back into the Studio One menu and we're gonna go to Keyboard Shortcuts. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna search for the name of the macro, which is negative 12. There it is. So negative 12, you just simply click it and then you enter in the key. Now, assign it a keyboard shortcut that is gonna be easy for you because like, I'm just gonna say, I use this all the time. I probably use it more than the record button, honestly. You know, it's, it's like the space bar. Like I use this thing all the time. So assign it a keyboard shortcut that is going to be accessible, like your hand, like your fingers are gonna be able to reach it quickly on the keyboard. So in other words, like I wouldn't do like shift, control shift L. <laughs> you want to just be have a, like one thing. So if you want to assign it with the tilde, you just simply type in the tilde here. I don't really want to type in the tilde because I already have that. So I'm going to use, I guess the forward slash. Okay. Now it it's, gives me a warning. If I assign it the forward slash that this key is already assigned to transport toggle loop. Um, okay, I've never even actually used transport toggle loop and I don't even know what that means. So I think that's fine. So I'm just going to go ahead and assign it. And I'm going to apply it. And I'm going to okay it. And now we're going to test it. So here, let's test it on this big obnoxious breath. So remember, we just select it first. You can't just look at it. It doesn't know telepathically what you're thinking. And then just hit whatever keyboard shortcut you assigned it. If you assigned it the forward slash or the tilde or whatever, <gasps> it worked. And as you see, it jumped back because of the auto scroll. The, the cursor was kind of like over to the left and so it jumped back, but it worked. O-M-G, it worked. It worked here. The therapist on behalf of the HMO. The rehabilitation plan is underway. The physiotherapist looks at the medical record, examines the guidelines, begins treatment, and after that, he reports to the doctor via cell phone. Ron successfully completed the series of physiotherapy treatments. And that's how that works. Uh, I hope this helps you. I, I use this keyboard shortcut so much. And for more Studio One content, check out my playlist that's right up here. Thanks so much for watching. Like, subscribe, leave a comment. Bye.